Renee's here to launch her new book called Children of Air India, Unauthorized Exhibits and Interjections, and it's published by Nightwood Editions. It's a series of elegant sequences exploring the nature of individual loss situated within public trauma. This is a deeply personal collection rendered in poetic voice by Renee Sarojini Sakhokar as she shares her family's tragic connection to the June 23, 1985 bombing of Air India Flight 182. Decades after the horrific mass murder, the years of investigation and one of the nation's longest and most expensive inquiries, with no findings released yet, Air India continues to haunt not just the individuals touched by loss, but our collective human psyche. This first docu-poetic collection from Sakhlakar breaks new ground in its approach to the Canada Air India saga. This poignant work is animated by a proposition that personal and shared violence produces continuing sonar and echo occasion that binds us even when we choose to be unaware or indifferent. Children of Air India will call into question our individual response to the Air India disaster that continues to resonate around the world decades after the original event. Renee Sarojini Sakhlakar, whose work includes poetry and nonfiction, also writes The Canada Project, a lifelong poem chronicle about her life from India to Canada, from coast to coast. Work from The Canada Project appears in literary publications including The Georgia Street, The Vancouver Review, Prism International, Poetry is Dead, Subterrain, Rice Paper, CV2, Riga, A Journal of Provocations, Geist and Arc Poetry Magazine, and is forthcoming in anthologies, Mother Tongue, Hooligan Presses. Renee, a recipient of the 2003 First Place Poetry Award at the Series International Writers Festival. Children of Air India is her debut collection. Renee is the daughter of Reverend Basant Sakhlakar, deceased, a former BC school trustee and United Church minister, and she is married to Adrian Dix, leader of the Provincial Opposition Party in British Columbia. She lives in New Westminster, BC. Now, Renee, over and above doing all this, anybody who knows her knows what a great, great, wonderful, talented, exceptional human being she is. So I'm going to just read a little tribute to Renee called Grace, Light, and Serenity. The essence and epitome of Grace, Light, and Serenity, a lady of immense talent, great insight, and integrity, Renee Sarojini Sakhlakar, bears her wounds and invisible scars and opens her heart for all to see the travesty and the tragedy endured by the children of Air India Flight 182. She is a child of India, she is a child of Canada, an honored woman standing tall, an inspiration to us all, Renee Sarojini Saklakar. Please come up. That's our poet laureate for New Westminster, Candace James. Candace, thank you. Can we have a round of applause for Candace? I want to thank all of you for coming out today. It's a busy time of year. For those celebrating the Christian calendar, it's the first Sunday in Advent, many other important religious and cultural holidays. And we're getting ready for the excitement and perhaps ex exhaustion of the celebration that is uh, Christmas, maybe the madness that is Christmas. 
And I'm going to ask you to journey with me into time. This, you know, very sad event in our nation's history that affects me personally. Before I do, can everyone hear me all right? Can you hear me in the back? Good. So I really want to honor all of you uh, for coming out. And what you're going to do for me is witness with me the very act of hearing these poems and being present when I read them. Some very fine poets with us today. Um, is an act of witness. So June 23rd, 1985, 28 years ago, I'm 23, I believe it was a Sunday, and we're at home at 820 Dublin Street, what I call the home house in the book, in New West, my family, and of course, like many, many families who get bad news, I guess in the past it would come by letter or telegram, and it came by phone ringing, and of course those moments are ones you never forget. And I find them a little too painful to share in, in um, a kind of reading aspect, but you'll find them in the book and you can always share with me your own thoughts about that. So I'm gonna read a series of fragments really in the same way that that plane exploded and fragmented 329 lives, all the passenger and crew, including 82 children under the age of 13. And, you know, I didn't start out writing this. It claimed me. I was writing a fairly typical memoir, you know, women of a certain age in creative writing classes. And uh, my mentor at the time, wonderful, wonderful poet and writer, uh, Wade Compton, quietly said to me, well, you might face this thing he calls the rupture. And all of us who are creators will understand, I think, when you're called, to do something and you have that terrible sense of, oh, I have to do this but I don't feel strong enough, I don't feel up to it, I think I'll drown my sorrows in drink or some other distractions. You know, we can become very self-destructive because the call is there and we're just not up to it. Or we can procrastinate. If you're a creator, you know all about that and of course that's what I did and I didn't really want to tell this story. It was too painful, too complicated, too controversial and still is controversial. Why would our fellow citizens put bombs on a plane? What cause is ever uh, that justified? It's an important question, because sometimes we do feel so powerfully about things, particularly injustices. And the more I ran away from writing this book, the greater this rupture became, and finally I had to respond. So I responded to the call. And what that meant was becoming a student of this saga, and sitting down with the thousands and thousands of documents, my own family documents, my aunt and uncle, my mom's youngest sister and her husband were on the flight, they died. And also the documents of other families, we've been on such a journey together, the families involved, through the long years of our country, not really in the great Canadian way, you know, not really paying attention or engaging with what it is to be part of Air India. And then finally the trial and that, thing that we all paid for through our tax dollars that resulted in the acquittal, which anyone who has lost a loved one to murder will know. I have a dear, dear friend here who's a, an exceptional crown lawyer on behalf of the people and she'll know exactly what I mean. When you lose a loved one, any one of you have lost a loved one, but particularly when you lose a loved one to murder, there is a whole set of connections that start to happen. So I became a student of all these things, right? and I sat down with these documents, thousands of them. And as I sat with the documents, these voices started to come up. Ghosts, really. I said that when I started writing this saga, I didn't really believe in ghosts. Oh, I believe in ghosts now. And certainly I believe in the spirit. So I truly mean it when I say thank you for entering this journey with me.